Uh, my name is Seni Mara. I am the head of communications at the CRC. Um, thank you very much here for that uh, brilliant exposure outlining the uh, ongoing work of the CRC in drafting a people centered constitution. Uh, my task here is simple. Uh, I will moderate the question and answer, I will open the floor, and then you will have the opportunity to ask any question you wish to uh, ask the chairman. But please, your name and the institution you are representing. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, my name is Yusef Taylor for Gainaco News. Um, I have two questions. My first question is um, regarding the um, Schedule 2 of the current 1997 Constitution, which gives indemnity to APRC in particular, AFPRC members. Um, if the National Assembly or um, a private member's bill was put forward to address that, to rectify that, because we are currently under the TRRC and many other um, initiatives commissions which are trying to expose financial corruption and all manner of um, tyrannical uh, you know, instances that happened in the Gambia. Would, you, would your commission consider it a, a sort of a conflict if a private member's bill was tabled to sort of eliminate that so that Yaya Jame and members of the AFPRC that we are being aware of the tyranny that they've done in this country can be brought to book. Schedule 2. Would your commission find it a sort of a conflict if another um, institution, say the National Assembly or even a private member's bill was put forward? What's your second question? Two questions, yes. Thank you very much for reminding me, actually. <laughs> um, it's surprising that finance is being a problem because of we do know that funds are being dispersed left, right, and center to the executive. I mean, is, is, is it not a, a lack of commitment from the government that checkbooks are holding the CRC back? Yeah. Okay, with regard to your first question, I think we need to make a distinction here between the work of the AFPRC and the CRC is mandated to do. Irrespective of what we do, we have to recognize the fact that Parliament still has its authority under the Constitution. If the Parliament were, decide, if were to uh, decide to do with uh, any matter under the Constitution, whether it's in Shadow or another provision, that's the prerogative of Parliament, so long as the constitutional proceedings and the processes involved are being so. So I don't think it helps you know, for me to render any opinion on that. Parliament has its powers. And uh, irrespective of what we are doing, uh, it's entirely up to the House to determine uh, what they need to do. That can be done independently of what we are doing. But ultimately, in terms of uh, transitional justice, uh, what we expect will happen down the line is that there will be dialogue between the PRC and ourselves so that we can learn from them what aspects will be able to learn through their processes which may be of benefit in terms of constitutional review and the right of with regard to, the, to your second question, I didn't indicate that, and I need to make this very clear, that finance is a problem. Uh, what I indicated is that uh, we have challenges, and uh, the challenge really relates to the issue of capitals. Uh, we've had, during the public consultation, to carry, uh, you know, bulky amounts of money, you know, over millions of dollars. I mean, it's quite risky, you know, for one individual. Uh, to be carrying that alongside. And that has become necessary because, as you know, in our rural communities, you know, we issue checks. I mean, I mean, I mean you, you, you need this cash uh, to, deal, to deal with matters like that. But we have other transactions that are government as nature, where people don't have a camera, and uh, you need to make money for payments. So we have all of this amount being, being uh, carried along. And also in relation to those who were our participants, you know, our partners in this process, they have to be paid. It would have been easier to issue checks so you know exactly what I'm about instead of carrying life or, 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 or money and so on. So it's, it's a huge challenge uh, for us and uh, we always have to uh, you know, consider whether we needed to do X, Y, Z because it involves so much money or whether we should you know, do it in tranches 
uh, and that slows down the entire process. So that is, that, that, that is the challenge we have for the receiving. But we have communicated and we are in communication with the minister uh, on this matter, who I am aware is also in communication with the authorities responsible to see how this matter can be resolved. May, may I say that you can also ask questions in local languages for your local audiences? Any other questions? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Aru I have two questions for John. Uh, during your deliberation, uh, you spoke about the overwhelming uh, participation of people in the rural Gambia. <coughs> How was the participation of people in the Great Pine area? Because we understand at some point it wasn't as good as many would have expected. The other question is you spoke about the issue of meeting people in the diaspora, you mentioned Senegal, Nigeria, and other countries uh, in Europe. What is option B in case this uh, plan face to face with the diaspora paid? Because we say it will depend if funds are available. Yeah, in relation to the first question, uh, the question of if I have to put, if I have to average all the meetings that we've had in the greater Banjo area and compare them to the provinces, I'll tell you it's a false. Uh, that, that, that's just the, the honest position I can give. Uh, there have been some that have been better than others, but overall the participation we've seen in the rural areas uh, stand out starkly when you compare them to those we've had in the greater Banjo area. There we were actually expecting much more of the lively debates. Uh, but having said that, I have to indicate to you that on the last day of the public consultation, uh, you know, the team that was in uh, uh, in Box Bar, Banjo uh, had a live attendance from students of St. Joseph's Senior Secondary School, and that participation was excellent. It was really good. And, uh, you know, but these are expected. These things are expected. We are expected. Even though we expected differently, uh, but then uh, that is what happened. As to, what, as to why, I don't know the answer. Because I know their counselors did their very best. Our teams also went around, and the radio announcements were made. But I guess uh, people were just too busy with other, with other matters. Second question, diaspora. Oh, the diaspora Gambians. Uh, what we are trying to also do, we do recognize that uh, we, not, we, need a, we need to have a plan B. And uh, that plan B is to set up facilities here within the commission, uh, where we can have video conferencing uh, with uh, people in the diaspora. And that will be open to people, you know, even people in venues that we are not visiting. Uh, we are trying to establish that <coughs> so that Gambians uh, overseas, who for some reason uh, have not been able to travel to the country to participate in the local consultations, could be afforded that opportunity uh, to participate through video, video conferencing or even through uh, telephone, you know, school, you know, Conference calls and things like that. So that's that's something we are working on.